He Wait. said, how does it feel to be home? Oh, man, it's a great feeling. It's a blessing, man. God is merciful. Uh, not taking it for granted at all. I'm super ecstatic. Just enjoying the most simple things, enjoying my family, being able to watch games and in a comfortable environment, you know. Man, thank you. Hey, you're glowing, man. Shit, I ain't even gonna lie, man. <laughs> I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your next one? Oh, so so next one, right, Javar, can you hear me too or can you just hear Gil? Okay, you he can't hear me. You. So just talking about. This is just light skin. <laughs> 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 So, I mean, we all know about that situation in the Wizards locker room in 2009. Many people have assumed that there was no, beef between y'all. There was beef between y'all, though. But oh, y'all yeah. remained very close. So, you know, I was asked, what have you been like as a teammate to Javaris and just, just helping him out throughout these past few years? You heard him? So, now nah, repeat that for me, Gil. So, so, he was basically saying, you know, how the media thought we were like uh, enemies in that, uh, during the locker room situation. Um, and what 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 was our real relationship like? Man, it's crazy to have felt this thing for such a long time and have had the media create their own narrative of the situation. You know, just not being able to speak about it. But man, uh, man, you were super close. You was my partner. We used to hang out all the time. Uh, sometimes I would go out to Gito's room and we would just talk. We would just kick it, uh, talk about random stuff. Sometimes we would you know hit the club together. You know, this, this was a friend, this was somebody I really hung. Mm -hmm. And the media created a, a completely different narrative because of the situation. Mm -hmm. And they just took it to a whole nother level, man. Yeah, like I, I remember like... We, we, like people I, really have no clue. I know, I, I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was weird because like when we wasn't talking, we were just looking the, uh, you look in the paper, right? And like, this nigga said this? Oh, man. And it seemed like that's what was going on, that, you know, most of the things that was, uh, like, getting misconstrued was the paper, not us. Yeah, I think we were both dumb. And, um, I mean, the media controls the masses, man. They can manipulate a lot of people. And we were too, you know, I was younger than you, but you were still young at the time. And, like you said, picking up the paper or looking at something online, and they're twisting words and making it seem like this person is saying this. And now we kind of have this, like, false grudge. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, man, I can't believe that. Or I can't believe you did that. And it never happened. This person never said it. So it was almost like we allowed the media to, like, divide us. Mm -hmm. Because if people could see how close we used to be, man, and just the, the camaraderie, the, the conversations we had, the things that we shared with each other. Uh, I was just talking to my cousin, Woody. I don't know if you remember him, but... You know, sometimes we'll hit the club and it'll just be me, you, and him. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody else. Yeah. No other teammates. Just us two and my cousin or or just us two sometimes. Or us two and a trainer or us two and a masseuse or something like that, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy because even though, like, we were going through that situation, we were still talking. Even though, like, the lawyers was like, oh, don't talk to him right now. We were still, <laughs> we were still doing our thing. Yeah, we were still communicating, man. It, it just... It's messed up how it all played out, man. If people could have just thought the truth, like I said, and um, had not twisted words and twisted stories. Because, you know, negativity sells, drama sells. Mm -hmm. And so they did their job. They created chaos. And uh, unfortunately, it, it ended up in a bad way for the both of us. But if they had painted the truth, I think the outcome, I think everything would have been completely different. True, true. It would have been a different understanding. Yeah, true. Like, uh, the last time I seen you, when we was at 360 working out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep, three was, yeah, we was at 360. Yeah. We, had a, we had a long conversation. We stood outside talking for maybe, would you say, like an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About an hour. Yeah. So we had random guys walking by, like, man, I'm proud of you, brothers, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, oh. <laughs> How do we stay connected? Oh, uh, just over the years? Yeah. I mean, we found some type of way to keep in contact, with, you know, whether it was me having your number saved in my phone or uh, even when you switched numbers out. We just knew the same people and they knew that we needed to talk. So, you know, we stayed connected. You stayed in my corner. Um, you know, we've had our ups and downs too, though. You know, I won't sugarcoat it. 
Um, but overall, we stayed connected, man. And, you know, look at us now, we here. Yeah, like usually, like, uh, if we did have a problem, it was uh, Quran that put us back together. Like, uh, yeah, Quran put us back together. Somebody, somebody that's close to both of us, they be like, man, y'all need to talk, man. Yeah. It was always yeah, me. It was, it was, we had our times when we fuck heads about certain stuff. I'll get mad at you about stuff, but, yeah. you know, we always come back around because, you know, that's just, that's how brothers are, man. We bump heads, but, you know, come right back around to each other. Yeah, that was the, uh, that was really our, our um, like, over the last few years, whenever we got, like, like we had disagreements, it's because I did some shit on Instagram. Right? I'll do some shit on Instagram. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, that's, man. The, that's that shit I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Lose my hey, number. <laughs> man, you, you, you said you said your pranks and the jokes, man. I mean, you hella funny, don't get me wrong, but some people wake up and be like, man, I can't believe it. Right. There ain't no way this bitch is <laughs> the, the, the funniest shit be like you like you like lose my number like motherfucker you lose your number like that, that that shit used to be funny man but how's the family though for real no nah, everybody's going to them everybody's thankful them home um, I mean it's just as ecstatic as I am you know mm-hmm. so yeah, everybody's glowing everybody's cheesing you know, super thankful everybody's you know, been watching, family is everything have you been watching uh, have you been watching playoffs of course. You know, I got to stand to my Lakers, man. You think I got to head on some kids? This ain't got nothing to do with me getting drafted by the Lakers ever playing for them. Like, I'm a real Lakers fan. For real. Uh, so, 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 Lakers, Grizzlies. What you got? <laughs> Over with. We don't need to talk about that no more. Mm-hmm. Dylan Brooks, we don't need to talk about him no more. Like, get ready for next season. You think we going to, uh, <laughs> you think we going to the chip? I definitely do. And I'm not being biased. I just think we have, we now have all the people that we need. You know, at first, like, people trying to stack, you know, big threes and big fours, which I feel like Boston created. Uh, you know, with Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett, um, Paul Pierce, and he ended up being a big four, because I don't think anybody could Ray John Rondo against the talented as he is a future Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, everybody kind of jumped on that bandwagon it felt like that was, you, you needed that to go to the championship. You needed that to win the chip. And, you know, when they traded Westbrook, we got a lot of pieces, a lot of valuable pieces, a lot of talent. Um, so I think we got all the pieces in place to do it. Okay, okay. Did you, were, were you on the prison team? Yes, well, man, I love basketball so much, bro. Like, I, how could I not be? <laughs> was it like that shit on TV, though? Motherfucker just fouling? Yeah, but not when you play under the whistle. You know, if you if you play on a yard or something like that, like yeah, they get real physical. You got people that have lost teeth. You know, God been merciful in a lot of ways. I still got all my teeth. Uh, <laughs> thankful for that. But uh, under the whistle, it's, it's it's a lot better. You know, people gonna miss calls just like they do for teeth. But it's just it's something for the guys. You got a lot of talent in that place. Mm-hmm. A lot of talent. A lot of people that just made mistakes. You know what I mean? And they. They never got the opportunity, but a lot of talent. You you thinking about playing in the big three this year or in the future? Yeah, I definitely would consider that, man. I, I love the game. I can still play. I can still move. So uh, I think I end up putting the ball down like you know, I can't move no more. Mm-hmm. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm that slow, you know, then I put the ball down. But right now, I can still go. Okay, okay. Uh, what would you tell your younger self? Oh, man. I don't even think we got enough time, man. <laughs> but, um... Leave that nigga Gil alone, boy. I would have been more humble. I was always a hard worker, but I would have been more humble and just more patient. Mm-hmm. Patience is key when you're young. I think that, you know, you're coming into the city and most guys are one and done, and you're trying to compare yourself. Mm-hmm. Like if you were ranked top ten in high school, and then you go to college one year and you get drafted, and you look at a person that was probably like ranked thirtieth uh, in the top fifty, get more playing time than you. And you're like man, I know I, I'm better than this. People. And it's just the opportunities, and, and you start comparing yourself to other people. And like man, like what's going on? 
And sometimes you just got to be patient. Mm-hmm. You got to wait your time. You got to stay down and keep grinding. So I think that was one of my problems. Like I wanted to play like right away. And I was mm-hmm. on the team with Kobe and Derek Bishop and Mark Odom. Yeah. You know, like greatness. But I still wanted to play. And I would get frustrated and start down myself, losing my confidence. And, uh, you know, that, that's just not good. You start losing your confidence as a pro athlete, it's never good. Definitely, you know, patience, patience and humility. Yeah. And the reason I say humility is because I, I had a situation with Kobe. Love him to death, man. Like, but when I came in, um, I didn't speak to him. And I walked past him like seven times and didn't speak to him. Now, he, he probably was looking at me like, who the hell is this kid? Like, not speaking to me, I'm Kobe. Mm-hmm. But it was more so like to show him that, man, I'm here to play with you. Like, I'm, I'm, I used to be a fan, but now we're on the same team. You know what I mean? I'm here to play with you. And he hit me on my chest and he was like, what's up, young fella? He spoke to me first. And, it, that you know, something like that can come off as arrogant. You know what I mean? I was just young. I wanted, I had so much to prove. I had a chip on my shoulder. And uh, me and Kobe used to go at it in practice. Just no exaggeration. Elbows, cursing. I was only 19, though. Mm-hmm. So if I could talk to my youngest self, it's like, show Kobe that you got heart. Don't go too far. Like, you still Kobe, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't do too much. Even with me and you, like, you was a big brother to me. Like, go at Gil, talk trash to him. That's still, that's still Gil now. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you, know, we, you know, since we do reflect, you know, when we get old. Okay, you know, we do reflect on when, um, as we get older. Like, um, if you had to, you know, tell... You know, like somebody like John Morant or some of the young kids that's, you know, looking at hip hop in a way that's not healthy for their careers. What would you tell them? Looking at hip hop. You know, you know, like we we like we're we're really influenced by when I say music, like when we're listening in you know in games when we're getting ready for games, right? We have that music that get us right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, trying to live, you know, as a basketball player, trying to, you know, live that that style when it's really not us. Like, what would you tell somebody, you know, that's 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 coming up, you know, of the hoop side and <laughs> you just got to separate. Because honestly, some people come up in that environment for real. Like, I was a person that grew up in that environment for real. Come up in a project, I was raised in a certain type of way. You know what I mean? So you have to have a, a separation from that, especially to become a professional. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's hard for young guys because when everything is going good for you, it's hard to tell who's who. Mm-hmm. So everybody's jumping, but everybody's a yes man. All the women are there. So you kind of doing what you want to do, and you're also being misled at times. You got to think, these guys are 19, 20, 21 years old with $100 million, $200 million. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of yes men, a lot of tag along around them. So sometimes the influence comes from the outside. It might come from somebody in your old neighborhood. You know what I mean? But what I would tell somebody like John Moran is just to stay focused, man. You know, he's a world-class athlete, world-class talent. Um, he's reached a level that a lot of people dream of. You know what I mean? Like, my son loves John Morant. Uh-huh. When I tell you love him, he loves John Morant and Steph Curry, love him. And my son asked me about the situation with him. He was like, Dad, is he in trouble? Is he bad? Like, nah, he's not a bad person. He's the, he's the person that made a mistake. Still look up to him. You've been looking up to him. Don't let anything the media put out, you know, change your mind on that. He's still a good person, a great kid. He just made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And we don't know where it came from. We don't know whether it was the influence of, you know, rap music in our culture or something he was going through or somebody in his camp. You never know. Mm-hmm. We, can't, we can't get into his mind, but, you know, I really wish him the best. Like, he's going to do great things, but I think this is something that people are going to sweep under the rug and forget about. It's something that he learned from. He'll, he'll never make that mistake again. Yeah. And I'll be glad when people get off his back, honestly. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. You got one more. Oh, how uh, how did uh, Kobe's death 
affect you? How did what now? Kobe's death affect you? Man, that hit me hard, man. Uh, I was actually in the hole when I found out about it. And uh, it was a guy, like, talking out loud. Like, you know, you have people talking out the door, saying all types of crazy stuff. Just sometimes people lose their mind back there in the, in the place that I was at when I found out. And uh, a guy was like, oh, we did. And he was joking. Like, he said in a joke away. And I laid down like this guy. It was crazy. But then I, when I laid down, something told me to get up. And the officer was walking by, man. And he knocked on my door. He was like, man. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the man gone. And I shared real tears, man. Like, I thought about, you know, the times we shared together, it was, it was brief before I got traded. Um, we were close, man. He was a good dude. Like, I was a rookie. He could have treated me like a rookie or treated me like I was a nobody, not speaking to me. He would always, like, teach me about the game. Mm-hmm. If he was coming out the game, He's like, hey, you see how his feet planted? You see why I attacked him that way? You see why I guarded him this way? And he would just, you know, embrace me. So it, it really hit me hard, man. And I remember um, one of the good memories I had with him is that I got a chance to ride to the airport. With him. And this is a big thing with Kobe because Kobe is kind of like, I won't say anti-social. He, he hangs around like-minded people, so he don't have a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. And he'll tell you this. You ain't, you're just not going to hop in the car with him and go anywhere or go to the airport. And uh, I was able to ride with him to the airport. And uh, we just had to talk about basketball, about working on my jump shot, about, uh, like, if I stayed down, like, it was greatness inside of me. Stuff like that I can never forget. Mm. I remember for the rest of my life. And, and I, hate it. I hate that he's gone, but his legacy lives forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. You got any more? Okay, everybody, everybody say bye. <laughs> Tell me we appreciate it. I appreciate y'all having me. Wow, that was deep. My man. Welcome back. Shot, man. Get at me, bro. Welcome home, <laughs> B. You know we got, we, it, we got old shit to talk about, my nigga. You know. Oh, yeah, for sure. This man is so, <laughs> he's wild, man. <laughs> Hey, that's my man right there, though. I know, I know. He's cool as shit, man. Hey, tell them kids yeah. I said hello, man. And um, I'll hit okay, you after sure. this. All right, babe. Damn, welcome home, Mars man. Critter. Welcome home. Agent Zero. Change the game. Put that respect on his name. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse of less with desire? It's true. I'ma say it loud, none other.